When you have multiple tables that needs to be related to each other in Power BI, how do you do it? Do you do it through merge or do you do it with relationships? In this video, we're going to look at how you can implement each one of these and also talk about when you should be using one or the other. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernand and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where I focus on teaching beginners the wonderful world that is Power BI. I upload new videos every week so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So what exactly am I talking about? Let me show you. So here we have a Power BI desktop file that has some data at the moment. We have a lot of tables here and if I look at the data here, so all we have, we have a single employee table which kind of acts as our fact table. So it has information about employees and we have references across the different other tables that we have. So business unit ID, uh, division, region, um, but we these aren't useful to us, right? Because we want to be using the data that we have uh, referencing these. So for example, for business unit, we want to know uh, their business unit name, not their ID. So we know that we need to combine the employee with the business unit. We want to combine the employee with the candidate because we want to get their personal email, for example, or maybe we want to get their department name and so on and so forth. One way that you typically do this is by creating a relationship between these tables. So what do I mean by that? So if we go to our model here, you can see that we have them all not linked together, but we know how they should be related to each other. And we can create relationships between these tables by just using the column IDs. So let's start doing that. So let's do business ID first. So let's drag it here to our employee, business ID. Same here with the candidates, department ID against department ID region ID against region ID and then division ID against division ID. So what we've just done is what we've created what we call the star schema. So this means that you have a singular fact table that has all the information about the employees and you simply have other tables. These are called dimension tables and these are what propagates the filters for the employees. So what that means and uh, what the result of that is if we go to our report view, for example, and we go to our employee, we bring in the name, for example, as a table. And instead of just being able to use the values in this table, you can already automatically use the columns that are on the other tables as long as it's related to the employees table. This means if I bring in the personal email, you'll also get their personal email same thing with the business units without having to do much work at all. So creating relationships like these are very performant in Power BI. Uh, and it also means that if you have to add new dimension tables later, it's actually a lot easier because it doesn't require you to overhaul a lot in the Power Query side. But as you create more dimension tables, it creates a lot more complexity when it comes to looking at your data model. This means that if you have a new person that needs to be using your Power BI data model, it can look like a spaghetti model. It means that you, you would have way too many dimensions and this person wouldn't know exactly where to look for the data that they need. So how can you avoid this? You can avoid this by not using the relationships, but instead merging the tables into one in Power Query. So let me show you how you can do that. Let's go to transform data to open up our Power Query window. And from here, what we want to do is we want to do a merge on each of these dimensions. So what we want to do is we want to merge all of our dimension tables into our fact table. So let's show you how I could do that. So merge queries. Let's start with region. We'll do the region ID against region ID. And then we will hit OK and we'll bring in just the region, okay? And let's do the same thing for all the other dimensions.
So now what we've done is we have all of our data from our dimensions table into one single table in our employees table. The last thing that we'll need to do is we'll need to disable all of our dimensions because we don't need them anymore. The data that we want for our report is already in our employees table. So we can do that by disabling the load. So what this means is that it won't show up in your visuals as an option, but it will still be loaded because we still need to use it for our transformation. So if it continue. We hit close and load. And now you will see that our data model is now simplified into one single table. What implication would that have? So that means that you won't need to look for which queries or which tables the dimension table should be because you don't need that anymore. We've already got that in one single table. So all you'll need to do, for example, if you wanted to get the business unit, you just bring it in. Email, personal email, all that data from those dimension tables into one. So what this merge does is it simplifies your data model quite significantly. So instead of having multiple dimension tables, you would just have one single table that would have all of the data. Now it means that there's a lot more processing that needs to happen on the Power Query side. So when the query starts to load, because it needs to do all of those joins. Um, however, your final product would mean that the data model will be a lot cleaner for visualization. Now these two ways are perfectly valid for you to approach when it comes to making relationships between multiple tables. So what type of scenarios should you be using one or the other? So for example in our data model here it's a perfect example of where you should be using the merge right so you have a lot of dimension tables and you have a very small number of rows in your fact table that the impact of the query loading to merge these tables are insignificant compared to what you would gain which is a very very simple data model here however it's a different story if you have a fact table that has millions and millions of rows when you merge your dimension tables into this very big fact table you might suffer a very long query load uh, your performance or sometimes you might time out because it, sh it just takes way too long so if you have a very big fact table it's actually much better if you just create your dimension tables and create the relationships that's what this feature is made for and what's more creating more dimension tables doesn't require you to reload all of the data that you have in your fact table so it could potentially be a lot faster for you especially when you're creating reports on top of this so i hope this video helped you understand when you should be using merge or relationships when it comes to joining multiple tables together if this video helped you or you have any more questions let me know in the comment section box below Get in touch using the social media links that I included in the description box below. And thank you so much guys for watching. See you again on the next one.